Hey, this is Ron Keel, the metal cowboy and host of the Streets of Rock and Roll Radio Show. This is Zach Wild, Black Label Society. Hey, this is Sebastian Bach. Hey, this is Jeff Tate of Queensryche. Hey, this is Bruce Kulick. Hey, this is Michael Anthony from Van Halen, Chicken Foot, and All Points in Between. And you and I are both here listening to The Shoe. The Shoe. The Shoe. To The Shoe. You're listening to The Shoe. With the best guy I know. The best young guy I know, for sure. Miles Schumann, crank it up! Miles Bishop Schumann, 14-year-old rock and roll radio host. I've got something pretty cool for all you guys today. Last week, I went over. I went to Boston, because I live a few hours outside of Boston, and um, I was given by my good friend Robert Sarzo uh, tickets and passes to the Queensryche show, and then um, I got to interview Jeff Tate before the show. And so Jeff and I sat down for a good 15 minutes or so. I did an interview with Jeff back on the on the Blog Talk Radio show a while a while back. Um, in fact, some of you CMS fans might already know that. Uh, and um, this interview was really cool. I mean, uh, Jeff and I talked for a while, and uh, I want you guys to go ahead and listen to it. And then we're going to come back, um, maybe a few more little interview segments, and then. Play some tracks and talk the rock. This is Miles Dishushum, and this is my interview with Jeff Tate. We'll be back after this. This is Miles Dishushum, and I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, here at the Wilbur Theater. And I've got something really cool that I'm doing right now. I'm here with Queensryche's Jeff Tate. I interviewed Jeff a few months back when I was doing the Blog Talk radio show. Um, and we did it. We did that interview, and that got a lot of coverage on Blabbermouth and everything. And so finally, I'm back here in person. We're doing this interview in Jeff's dressing room. So Jeff, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure, Miles, and I hope this is even a better interview. And uh, sorry, unfortunately, I made all that up in the first interview. It's all lies. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, I feel like I'm forced to tell the truth. Is this for radio or? Uh... Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Well, I'll be careful of what I say then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so you guys are back out on this leg of the tour. This is Operation Mind Crime again, right? It is. Yeah, we're continuing the uh, the story and. Uh, traveling to uh, places that we haven't been before, and a couple that we have. So how long is this Operation Mind Crime Tour going to go on for then, do you think? I believe it goes till Labor Day, September. Okay, so you guys still have quite a while of this tour. We do, yeah. We're not going to be touring continuously till September. Uh-huh. We're going to take a few breaks here and okay. there. Okay. So how do you like... Um, Oh, yeah, go ahead, the coffee. <laughs> so how do you like um, doing this whole, uh, you know, I'm sure you've, you've obviously played Operation Mindcrime so many times throughout its entirety um, over the years. Uh, what keeps bringing you back to this album? Um, well, the fans, really. It's mm-hmm. a fan favorite. Mm-hmm. And um, this being the 25th anniversary of, of the album, I think it's... Uh, a real obvious and uh, wonderful time to play the album again and remind people about it and uh, satisfy those people that keep asking, you know, right. for it. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I personally love it, and now you guys are out on this tour with Hurricane, and obviously Robert Sarzo is in your band, and he is the uh, original lead guitarist of Hurricane, so he's um, opening for you guys and closing the show. Um, so all around, it's just a really cool tour then. Yeah, actually, we we toyed with the idea of calling the whole tour the Robert Sarzo tour. <laughs> the Roberto Sarzo yeah, tour. Yeah, but he felt a little embarrassed by that, so right. we decided to <laughs> not do that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, obviously, you guys, um, I promise you I'm not going to ask much about this thing, but uh, you're, you guys are supposed to go to... Um, trial if something's not settled next month, I believe, is what they said in the... Um, articles and everything so uh are you guys close to ending it that's the only question i'm going to ask about the case i think so yeah i think we're weeks away from uh settling it okay so it should be out there pretty soon then i think so yeah all right that's good to hear then so we're coming up on a year since uh your i guess a debut album with this um well with your new lineup of Queensrÿche and the other guests that played on the album you're coming up with a year since frequency unknown was released Mm -hmm. looking back on uh this last year can you kind of uh, reflect on how the album has been uh, reacted to by the fans and all together this whole situation? Because it's coming up in a year since you even started this tour, too. Yeah. 
Well, you know, honestly, Miles, I, I don't reflect much. Uh-huh. You, you like know. looking through it. Yeah, I'm kind of involved in the now and, and planning on what I'm going to be doing in the next few months, you mm-hmm. know. And um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we're weeks away from se- our settlement, you know, mm-hmm. so that will be uh, a wonderful time when that happens because then we can start talking about what we're going to be doing. Right. And um, have all kinds of fun plans in store. And um, can't wait to talk about it. But unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> so are you going to continue? Because at one point you said that you didn't want to have a stable lineup. You wanted to have kind of a revolving uh, door and play with as many great musicians as you could. Are you still feeling that way? Or do you want to continue with this, sta- with this lineup that you have currently? Well, I, I love this current lineup. I absolutely love it. And I, I think the feeling's mutual. Everybody seems to really enjoy playing together and uh, enjoy hanging out together. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, right. I, uh, I, uh, I like the idea of playing with a lot of different people, but I also like the idea of a, a really solid group of people that mm-hmm. you can count on that they're going to be there, you know? Right. And uh, how did I avoid that question? Is that okay? <laughs> did I avoid it? <laughs> no. <it's, laughs> um, so then you also, uh, have, you also have a solo career, too, as well as um, Queensryche, and you've released two solo albums, right? Yeah, and uh, my solo band uh, is going to Mexico on tour in May. Oh, okay. Is John Moyer in that band now? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he is. Cool. Yeah, John's a friend of mine, and I know that he's done a few shows with Queensryche, too, when yeah. Rudy's not here. Yeah. So, now, tonight, I'm not 100% sure. Is it, um, are Rudy Sarzo and Simon Wright both here, or is it going to be um, John Moyer or... Uh... One second. Okay, no problem. Hey, honey, can I call you right back? I'm right in the middle of the interview. Yeah, but did you know that today is National Okay, well, Miles, uh, he knows that now, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Bye, bye. <laughs> Forget you heard that. <laughs> all right, um, so is uh tonight are um is anybody filling in for anybody in this show or is this uh no this is with uh kelly and randy and robert and rudy and simon oh great yeah i didn't get to see simon last time so yeah that's right yeah so how how does it compare for you i mean is there a different feel in the band because of course the bass and the drums are such a big part of the band when you have a different uh bass and um bass player and drummer does it bring a different feel to the band at all, do you think? Because Brian Tishy and Simon Wright have, I mean, not completely different styles, but they have different styles of playing as well mm-hmm. as Rudy and John Moyer. Sure, yeah. You know, every um, every person brings their own special um, interpretation of the mm-hmm. music with them, you know. Although we have spent a lot of time talking about um, trying to uh, capture a certain sound, you know, in a certain way of playing a song. So these guys are all incredible musicians and really able to conceptualize uh, those kind of ideas. So they don't really have too much of a, a problem with uh, playing it a certain way, uh-huh. you know. But again, I, I, I try to give everybody the, uh, the freedom to interpret it, the music, you know, how they hear it and what makes them passionate about it, you know, because you don't want to curtail people's... Fa- passions right. for music you know right. uh, but on the other hand you have to find some kind of middle ground because queen's right music has to be played a certain way yeah you know it's it's written in a certain way that is uh very deceptive mm-hmm. you know uh, a lot of a lot of musicians hear it and they they listen to the song and they go oh yeah i got that and then when they try to play uh the song they find that it's a lot more difficult yes. or different than they mm-hmm. assumed you know there's a lot of real interesting timing changes in the songs, uh, in the arrangements are, are, are not conventional. Uh, my phrasing is very different for people trying to sing back up with me, you know. Uh, so it takes a lot of getting used to, yeah. you know. Uh, and uh, But all these guys that have been playing with me now are, are, are very used to it, and we all understand it, mm-hmm. you know. Now, last time I talked to you, you had told me that you were in the middle, and actually the night that we had uh, did the interview, done the interview, you um, said that you had been taking a break from writing. You said that you were working on a new album. Now, um, when I asked you this before, you didn't know the answer, but uh, now do you know if this will be a, um, 
another Queensrÿche album, or will this be a solo album? And also, how long are you? How, are, how what's the progress for this album? Like, how close are you to being done? Uh, I still don't have an answer for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be able to talk more in a few weeks about it. Oh, okay. After the whole thing is yeah. settled out. All right, and uh, have you done any writing with any, because I know that, of course, Robert Cyrus is a great writer, so have you done any writing with any of the other guys in uh, this lineup? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, also, recently you did uh, the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. I did, yeah. And um, I kind of got started at I kind of got started at the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camps, and so I'm very familiar with uh, everything that goes on there. But how was the experience for you, it being your first time? Well, it was really interesting. Um, I had talked to Rudy and John uh, Moyer ahead of time because they were very familiar with you know, how the whole thing worked. And they uh, gave me a pretty in-depth uh, tutorial, really, on, on what to expect. And then, uh, But when I got there, um, it was... It was very different than what uh, that they described, uh-huh. um, and uh, but I had a great time. I met a lot of really uh, really nice people who were very enthusiastic about music, and I I like being around people that feel that way about music because yeah. that's how I feel, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I got to jam with a lot of uh, a lot of people, and that was really really fun. And I'd love to do it again. And the people that run the the whole organization are very cool and uh, excited, you know, mm-hmm. to be there. And you can really feel that, you know, uh, which is so important. You can feel people's passion for what they do, and it's infectious, and I, I like to be infected like that. And you also got to kind of reunite with one of your old uh, friends, um, Rob Halford. Yeah. So when was the last time that you saw him before this whole camp? Well, last time I saw Rob was when we toured together in Europe, I'm going to say 2000. 10 or 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't back the when uh, he was in Halford and doing the whole Iron Maiden Queensryche tour? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, now, what about looking forward um, with... Uh, a- are you guys going to be, after this leg of the tour, um, taking a break until the whole thing is settled out? Or how, how long is this, is this leg of the tour going for? No, September. Yeah. Uh, as over, in like overall, yeah. Okay, as in like you guys started a few nights ago, I, um, and then when is your next break going to be? I guess is a better oh, way to oh, put yeah, it. Oh yeah, I got, I got you. Well, well, I think we have two more shows, and then we have four days off. Oh, okay, and then, and then we continue on in Colorado, and then go into the nice warm South. Yeah, <laughs> where we'll be wearing uh, shorts and uh, sandals finally, and uh, I think then we uh, kind of move our way south and west. And end up, um, you know, I don't actually know where we end up on the on this leg. I haven't looked that far ahead. I just know it's someplace warm. And also, as another uh, little quick question, this is just kind of a um, put it on the table kind of question. Uh, it, do, if you only could choose one for the rest of your life, would you tour or record and make new music? Oh, I think I'd I'd uh, make new music. Yeah, make right. New music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But do you like touring a lot too? I do. I really love it. Yeah, I love it uh, a lot more now than I've ever loved it. Okay, yeah. so you're you're having a better time with this lineup then? I am. Yeah, it's a it's a very positive group of people, and um, I I uh, find that um, uh, being in a positive um, situation and okay. a positive thanks. I needed yeah. that word yeah. environment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> positive. I think I. Let me start over. I think that being in a positive environment is good for me. Mm-hmm. You know, it uh, puts me in the right frame of mind. It really is uh, uh, conducive to creativity. And um, uh, I'm feeling very creative these days. And uh, I think that's probably due to the positiveness. Is that right? Positiveness? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Positivity of the situation. You're right. Yeah. Um, now... Of course, I've had my, my, I've had my fair share of, um, you know, because anybody that's out there in the public will get this, um, getting, you know, uh, smeared on the internet and stuff. And you've always kind of been known for never paying attention to that. How do you keep yourself out of all that stuff? Because, I mean, for me, as much as I don't want to go read stuff about myself, I'm so tempted to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I suppose if... Um if I would have gotten started in this business in the last 10 years, mm-hmm. I probably would have would fall prey to uh, reading about myself more. Right. But I started in a time where there was no internet. Mm-hmm. So 
I read, you know, a few negative things about our records and uh, about myself in magazines, mm -hmm. you know, early on. And I decided, oh, this this doesn't do me yeah. any good to read this stuff, you know. These people don't know me, right. you know. Uh, most of it's rumor and, you know, conjecture. So yeah. why get hung up on it, you know. So, yeah, it, I guess the best answer I can give you is just, you know, don't... Uh, don't tune in, <laughs> you right. know, don't go to those <laughs> sites or pages, you know, where, um, people troll, you know, just stay away from that stuff. Uh huh. And now just cause we're coming to an end here as a last question, a lot of people feel, or not necessarily a lot of people, but uh, there's, there's a fair amount of people out there that feel like, um, without Chris DeGarmo in the band that it can't be Queensryche. What do you say to the people that say without Chris DeGarmo, there's no Queen Queensryche? Um, Chris has been out of Queensryche and out of the band longer than he was in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> 17 years now he's been out. Yeah. You know, and uh, Queensryche has done, um, continued on, you know. He was he was a very talented guy, and, um, you know, he added uh, a lot of his uh, creativity and a lot of his, uh, his ideas to uh, our records that we did at that time. And... Um, and his time's over, you know, right. and, and the band moved on without him. And uh, that's just the way things go, you know. I guess, uh, you know, I, I loved working with Chris at the time. And, um, you know, maybe we'll work together in the future or, or likely not. You yeah. Know? All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. It's great talking to you as always. Thanks, and, Miles. Um, I'll, uh, good luck with tonight's show. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, there you have it. That was my interview with Queensryche's Jeff Tate. You know, a lot of people have ideas about Jeff, and, uh, you know, everybody has their own opinions, and they have the right to their own opinion. But Jeff really is a nice guy. Um, I've talked to him multiple times. He really is a, he truly is a nice guy. Um, and the whole band situation, I think, in my opinion, I think the fans have gotten a little bit too fed up about it. Um but that's just my own opinion, so you're welcome to yours. I support both Queens Rags. I I have, I mean, I'm Todd Latore is a friend of mine. I have his phone number, and we talk on occasion. And he's going to come on the show sometime. But I, I mean, I think Todd's a great vocalist too. But then I also, you know, I also support Jeff. So what are you going to do? So it's a bit of a, a bit of a throwback now. In uh, January, I went out to the NAMM show, and uh, I got to interview two other Jeff Tate's Queensryche members, and I also got to interview Parker from the other Queensryche, but I'm not going to play that interview in this show. Um, but I talked to Robert Sarzo and Randy Gain, the keyboard player, and so I'm going to go ahead and play Randy's interview first, and I'll come back for Robert's interview after, but just, just please note that these interviews are a little bit these are before the tour. These are from January. This interview that I did with Jeff Tate was only last week, so this is an up-to-date interview. But uh, I want you guys to hear the, those other interviews with those other Queensryche members. So I'm going to go ahead and play those, and then we'll come back, play some tunes, talk the rock. This is Miles the Shoe. This is my interview with Randy Gain. Now we're with Randy Gain, who is also in Jeff Tate's Queensryche, and prior to Jeff Tate's Queensryche, was in Queensryche, uh, kind of behind the scenes playing keyboards and has been there since the EP and with Jeff Tate and Myth before Queensryche. So you've been with Jeff Tate for a really long time. For, 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 for quite a while, since about 1980, 1979. Right. It's, it's, been a, it's been a long, uh, rewarding musical relationship. Now, I've talked to Jeff uh, a few times. He's always been very nice to me, but he is looked at in a certain way by some people because of what happened with the Queensryche split. What's your take on Jeff Tate as a person opposed to what people say about him? <laughs> oh, man. Well, Jeff is uh, much more uh, calculating and methodical than I think people understand. So he comes off aloof um, he's really uh, very uh, friend and family loyal, uh, very interested in, in his community of, of 
friends and musicians and family. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, how has the Jeff Taste Queensryche tour been going for the last year? Oh, it has been amazing. The fans have been wonderful. We've been uh, near capacity almost everywhere, if not sold out. The, uh, the, the, the fans have been really uh, encouraging and, and welcoming with, with the new uh, lineup. It's, it's been a great experience. Oh, so there's been a lot of great fan outcomes. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, now, talk a little bit about what you've done with Queensryche prior to um, Jeff Tate's Queensryche. Um, well, I, I worked with uh, Jeff a little bit with the harmonies on the EP. I did quite a bit of keyboard work on uh, Rage for Order. Okay. Um, on Empire, I, I wasn't there, but uh, a couple of uh, my little voice messages got got used. Empire. Empire. <laughs> um, and then I, I started getting back more in the swing of things with American Soldier and Dedicated to Chaos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Two-ton uh, heavy thing. Heavy thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I listened to that recently, and I, I just didn't realize how many times I said, uh, it's yeah. really kind but of it, embarrassing. <laughs> no, but it, it kind of makes it what it is. It does. Yeah. It does. So, um... Then with the Frequency Unknown album, you uh, wrote one of my favorite tracks. You wrote ha In the Hands of God, right? Uh, or was it that? Uh, oh, no, no, no. It was the... Um, Way to the World. Way to the World, right, right. right. I get them all mixed up. Sure. But you wrote um, Way to the World, which is one of my favorite tracks on the album. Talk about um, going in and joining Jeff for the writing sessions on this album. Was this your first time writing with Jeff and no. on the Queensryche stuff? Uh, no, we, 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 we've written together forever uh -huh. um, even even if there was no real point to it we would just get together and write uh -huh. but uh, this time with weight of the world especially that was a very difficult piece to produce and to arrange because I was going through some some recouping and that song was quite autobiographical for me right. Right. Yeah. All right, now, uh, what are you promoting here at the NAMM show? What am I promoting? Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not promoting any of that. I'm here for fun. So Jeff Tate's Queensryche, then? Sure, yeah. yeah sure, all yeah, right. That, edit that part. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, what's coming up for you guys? Uh, well, we have to wait for the court case. Right. And once that's settled, um, I hear there's a lot of touring in coming up that hasn't the ink hasn't dried because we couldn't commit to it without knowing what the the court case outcome was going to be but a lot of touring all right so even if um the the case of the name Queensryche doesn't go in um jeff's favor do you think that you guys will still continue absolutely there's such a good chemistry in this band it would it it would be such a shame to, to let that fall by the wayside. The, the, All right. The Sarzo brothers, Kelly, Simon, it is such an amazing experience to work with these people. All right. Well, best of luck to you guys. I know that uh, you can go to queensreich.com to find out more. Not uh, the other not one. Not the <laughs> other one. <laughs> um, if, uh, then um, there's the Queensreich Facebook page. Not the other one. Not the other one. <laughs> um, so that basically wraps it all up. Thank all you, right. Randy, for joining Thank you. me. Thank you very all right. much. All right, that was my interview with Randy Gain from Jeff Tate's Queensryche. And, yeah, he's been, he's been kind of behind the scenes with Queensryche since 1986 when Rage for Order came out. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and play a song that Randy co-wrote on Frequency Unknown, Jeff's album that came out last year with Queensryche. Um, and uh, I'm going to – and it's – it's one of my personal favorite songs off of Frequency Unknown. So this is uh, The Weight of the World by Randy Gain and Jeff Tate off of Frequency Unknown.
cool track off of Frequency Unknown by Randy Gain and Jeff Tate. Randy Gain we just talked to and Jeff Tate before that. Um, that song, I believe, is about a situation Randy was in a few years ago when he had a heart attack. And so if you listen to um, some of the lyrics closely, you can really see that uh, relation there to his heart attack. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, play my interview that I did with Robert Sarzo at the NAMM show. Again, this is kind of an outdated um, outdated interview because I did it in uh, January, but it still gives a lot of good information um, about Hurricane. And at the time, Ro you'll see Robert mentions that he wasn't sure what was going to happen with Hurricane, but Hurricane is currently touring with Queensryche. So uh, here you go. Here we are at the NAMM show. I have somebody who um, I have known for probably three or four years now, yeah, um, and uh, Robert Sarzo from Jeff Tate's Queensryche, originally from the band Hurricane in the 80s and 90s, and uh, Robert is also my teacher, and uh, we, when he's not on tour with Queensryche, we uh, get together on Skype, and uh, then he teaches me, and sometimes we do a little songwriting together. So how's it going, Robert? It's going great, Miles. I Really having a lot of fun, you know, here at NAMM, and uh, we just got back from touring uh, with uh, Jeff Tate, you know, Queensryche, and um, just really enjoying being here at NAMM, you know. Uh, and by the way, you're really, really congratulations on your uh, radio show, and uh, your bass playing is just really getting superb. Thank you. You make me proud. Thank you. <laughs> you started, well, I mean, I had been playing for like two or three years before but you really took me to a whole nother level so that, that's thank you so much for uh, you know for those kind words uh, it, it's just a real pressure uh, pleasure you know uh, t teaching you working with you thank you you're, you're so committed you're so passionate about the instrument and it's just a joy to uh, to talk to and hang out to and uh, yeah it's just really it's very nice thank you Robert. You, you're gonna do amazing in life not that not that you're not already doing great things, but, you know, I'm so excited and I can't wait to see what, what else you're going to be coming up with. Thank you. So, uh, I know that we're both doing, promoting Rock and Roll Gangstar here. What else are you promoting at NAMM? Well, I, uh, I play Ovation O'Donnell's guitars, uh, the uh, Line 6 uh, Very X guitars, the, uh, also the, um, the DT50s uh, amplifiers. Uh, the uh, let's see the strings I'm playing with my favorite strings the uh, clear tone ah. and also the star picks that they also have uh, they have the little star in the middle I love those picks because you know when you're on stage you're running around you're, and you're sweating a lot you want to know exactly precisely where your guitar pick is in your fingertips and myself I just use really that tiny little tip of the uh, of the uh, guitar pick and a lot of guitar picks this just fall apart on me oh yeah so uh, these picks really last for a long time, and I'm just, I love them. I love the strings as well. All right. And uh, what about the tour with Jeff Tate's Queensryche? How is all that going? It's going phenomenal. It's just really exciting uh, to meet all the great fans. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, sold-out shows, and uh, it's just great. I, I just The catalog is beautiful. It's, I love working with Jeff, Simon, Randy, uh, Simon, Rudy. Uh, Kelly, it's just a, you know, it's a great bunch of guys to be going out on the tour bus and, you know, going out there in the, uh, and just playing every night. It's a real tour. It's a real band. Right. Uh, and now, of course, there's two versions of Queensryche, which everybody knows if they listen to the show often, because we've talked about it before. Um, would you say that that causes confusion with the fans, or do you think they can figure it out pretty well? I think they can figure it out, especially right now, the way they're labeling it, so... Um, you know the fans are going out for the music. They they want good music, and um, you know that's what they're getting. They're right. you know they're getting people that are really passionate about what they're performing. So it, it, it's all good. Right. Uh, now, what about Hurricane and your solo stuff? Because before you joined Queensrÿche, you kind of had a Hurricane back together, and you had also released a solo album. Um, do you plan on doing anything else with Hurricane or your solo stuff in the future? Yes, I am. Uh, actually, you know, Queensreg is my uh, top priority right now. Okay. And, uh, and it is, you know, it's a band. Right. So, but when, whenever, uh, you know, there's a little time here and there available, I mean, we were really planning on doing a lot of tours, uh, a lot of dates uh, now. I mean, we already started early this year on the, uh, on the uh, s well, I flew on the 6th, so we actually started playing on the 8th. But, um... We're actually, you know, we're, we're going to continue touring. Uh, we're already starting to line up more uh, more dates. 
And um, with Hurricane Andrew Freeman, which is our second version of Hurricane, he's right now working in Las Vegas at the Rock Vault and uh, with John Payne and uh, Jay Shalom from Hurricane as well. Oh, okay. So, you know, whenever he has free time or uh, Kelly Hansen has free time, if he wants to, uh, you know, get together, we can, you know, try to figure that out with the original lineup of the second version of Hurricane. And uh, my solo career, yeah, I'm actually going to be going out and doing some dates whenever the state's available that will not interfere with uh, Queensryche and do my, uh, my solo project as well. And I, I just, I love playing guitar. I love being in, on stage and in the studio. So I just want to keep going, you know. I don't want any days off. Now, you mentioned Kelly Hansen, who, of course, is in Foreigner and was in the original lineup with you and Tony and Jay. But uh, you were fired from your own band in Hurricane. Would you... So are you saying that you'd be open to reuniting with the original lineup even after everything that happened back then? Yeah, you know, you have to actually sit down and, and talk and figure things out. Uh, first, it's got to be mentally, and then it's got to be spiritually. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a very well-balanced uh, en energy-wise. Right. Uh, or else on stage, it would just not be worth it. Uh, but, you know, everything is possible. I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's rock and roll, and... Um, a lot of bands are doing that, so we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. I'm open for it. You never know what happens. But, yeah, you, you got to really sit down and, and connect uh, spiritually and, and see where everybody's at at that moment. Right. Well, I've done two different interviews with Robert, two half-an-hour interviews in the past, so you guys can look on the archives if you want to hear those. We've talked Queensryche, the solo album, and then the hurricane before he was in Queensryche. Robert, of course, I can talk to you for hours, but I get five minutes here, so um, I got to cut it off now. But thank you so much for talking to me, and I'm, I know that I'll, I know that this isn't the last time I'll talk to you. There will be a lot more, and uh, I'll see you later tonight too. We'll see you so, later. All right. Great to see you. Man. All right. Thanks, Robert. All right, Miles the Shoe Shoeman, 14-year-old rock and roll radio host. That was my interview with Robert Sarzo of Jeff Tate's Queensryche when I did it at the NAM show in uh, January. Now, as a bit of a throwback, I think I'm going to go ahead and play a tune from uh, his Hurricane days called Hurricane. Now, uh, as a little bit of a history about the song that you may not know, this is, uh, th this is the first song that Robert and Tony Cavazzo, who started Hurricane, uh, ever did with uh, Kelly Hansen on vocals. And Kelly Hansen, of course, is now singing in um, Foreigner. Now, they, the new lead singer in Hurricane that they're using with um, this Queensryche tour that they're doing, Hurricane and Queensryche, Jason Ames, who plays in Jeff's solo band, too, he sounds a lot like Kelly Hansen. Uh, you know, I got to witness his sound check and uh, them in concert, and he really does sound a lot like Kelly Hansen. So uh, look for YouTube, and I'm sure if you search, you can find some videos on, uh, of you, on YouTube. But anyways, this is the first song that Robert and Tony Cavazzo wrote together. Uh, called Hurricane by Hurricane. Here you go. <laughs>
Mr. Schumann, that is uh, Hurricane by Hurricane, the, one of my favorite 80s bands. And of course, Robert Sarzo was in it and started the band and then uh, was fired years later and now has started uh, kind of a new Hurricane with Tony Cavazzo, who was the original bass player, Mike Hansen on drums, and now, uh, my, now Andrew Freeman was singing, but now Jason Ames is singing. Jason does a great, great job. Sounds a lot like Kelly. Um, anyways, God... We only have um, like 17 minutes left, so I think uh, maybe I want to I want to play another um, Queensrÿche song. This is kind of a Queensrÿche and Hurricane based show, I guess. But no, we'll get into some other stuff after. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play one of my favorite Queensrÿche tunes off of Operation Mindcrime called "Eyes of a Stranger." I know that you'll know this one, so this is "Eyes of a Stranger." We'll be right back.
I remember now. Miles Bisher Schumann, that was uh, Desire by the Winery Dogs. If you haven't checked out the Winery Dogs, then you need to go do that because the Winery Dogs are a killer new band featuring uh, Mike Portnoy, Billy Sheehan, and Richie Kotzen on vocals, um, vocals and guitar. So they're a trio, and uh, they're really good. In fact, I think that Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley both said that uh, this is their favorite album of 2013. This was on Eddie Trunk's uh, list of favorite albums of 2013, probably because he had a little piece in getting them together, but uh, I don't know. Um, and uh, But not necessarily just because of that, because this would probably be my favorite album of 2013, too, because it really is a killer album. You know, you won't believe it. you got to go listen to it if you haven't done that yet. So that was a little uh, song for you called Desire. One of my favorite songs off, the, off of that album. And before that, that was Eyes of a Stranger off of Operation Mindcrime by Queensryche. God, anyways, we only have like six, uh, five minutes left in this show. So um, I think what I'll do is uh, play one more song and then finish out the show. This is Miles Dushushum, and I'll see you after this song. Your 
your flesh and blood, your family, yeah. and like no other, until they bury me six foot deep, no matter what the future holds, and even though you just begun to grow, just know you'll always have your mother. Damage is done I never wanted things to work out this way My little ones How do I say how sorry I am? Someday you see the truth And you'll come running back to me Just know you'll always have your mother song by Lita Ford off of her 2013 album, Living Like a Runaway. Um, that song is called Mother, and it, I th- believe it is about the situation that she's in with her kids that she has been vo- quite vocal about, um, parental alienation. And uh, I'm not going to go into it, but you can search around on the internet and find out more about it. But um, anyways, we're coming to the last uh, minute and a half of this show. Um, expect Lita on the show, you know, pretty soon, and, um, because she was supposed to come on my debut show, but that didn't end up working out, because I guess she had, um, she got sick, is what I was told, so she, she wasn't able to come, but in a few weeks, um, she will be back on. Let's talk about, uh, next week. Next week, I have Mark Rivera from Billy Joel, Foreigner, and, um, Ringo Starr's all-star band is going to be, uh, I did an interview with him this past summer and I'm going to play that and then, um, you know, play some music and talk the rock. And, uh, then following that week, that's a surprise. That's a secret right now, but you'll find out about that soon. <clears throat> and my voice is a little bit hoarse because I'm, uh, putting all this together pretty much the night after the, uh, Queensryche concert. And, you know, I was singing along to all those Queensryche songs, so my voice is kind of gone. Um, but anyways, make sure to go check out rock and roll gangstar, uh, dot com rock, for rock and roll gangstar apparel. The coolest rock and roll clothes and accessories, Simon Wright, Rudy Sarzo, Robert Sarzo, all wear them, uh, as well as James Kotak, Todd Latore, Parker Lundgren, uh, God, who else? I mean, everybody wears them. Uh, so anyways, you can go and, um, find, uh, rock and roll gangstar at rock, uh, at rockandrollgangstar.com and then make sure to go check out my favorite charity which is rock numeral 4 recovery.net so it's rock the number 4 recovery.net wounded warriors warrior spirit this is Miles Issue Schumann <laughs> 